This video shows you how to work an example at the medium level of the AC node equations game, which as I noted before is very similar to DC node equations except that we're using complex valued impedances. Um, I'm going to skip the example here, although I certainly recommend you look at some of those, but let's go straight to an exercise. So the first thing as always is to place our ground. Um, usually it's a good idea to connect that to a voltage source so that we don't have to use a super node. So I'm going to put it up there. And now we're going to enter the simpler equations first. So for example, we know that since we have a voltage source, we will need a voltage constraint equation when we're doing nodal analysis. So I'm going to pick that first, voltage constraint equation. And it, it reminds us that we can't enter things such as I1s or V1s as the values of the source. We have to actually enter the numerical values that are printed below the circuit diagram. That's simply because there isn't room to put all that on the circuit diagram without getting too cluttered. Okay, so we want to um, basically express the fact that V1s constrains V4 with respect to the reference node. So that's going to be equal to simply a fixed value. So we fill that in as V4. And the V1s value in this case is just going to be 5 angle 0 volts. And that's a plus si uh, sign here because V4 is connected to the positive side of V1s. So we'll check that. And that is correct. Now we also need to write um, some SOT variable equations. And I'm going to do those also because those are relatively simple. Um, so here we have to find V0 and I0. So let's do V0 first. So that's going to be a SOT branch voltage. So we'll select that and we'll write V0 equals, and then let's find V0 here. So that is across this current source, but that's very easy because it's just a difference of node voltages. So that's going to be this term we can use, or you could use two of these terms, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to say that that's equal to V3 minus V4, and that's because the positive side of V0 is connected to node 3, and the negative side goes to node 4. Then I'll select SOT branch current to write the equation for I0. And so I0 equals, and let's see, I0 here is the current through an inductor. And one end of the inductor is connected to ground, so I'll need this type of term, which is um, basically a current through an impedance that has one end tied to ground, as it explains there. And that's going to basically be 0 minus V2 is going to be the voltage difference that drives the current. And so this will be a minus sign here, and V2. And then that's going to be divided by the complex impedance of the inductor, which is just J3 ohms. OK, and then lastly, we need to write the KCL equations. So I'll select KCL equations here, which remember, node analysis is always based on Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL. So let's do, first of all, remember we do not do that for the reference node, which is this black node here. So we'll start out with node 1, and we're going to need a term for a current source here, and then we have a resistor going to ground, so that'll take that type of term, and then a resistor that does not go to ground. So then we need two voltages, oops, and then that's equal to zero. So this current source, I'm adding currents that leave node 1. So I1s actually enters it, so I need to put a negative sign there. And then the value of I1s I found down here is 3 angle 180 degrees. And I could put it this way. Um, I could also remember that minus 1 is actually 1 angle 180 degrees. So I could make this a plus sign and make this 0 degrees. That might be a little bit simpler. Um, I think I'll just do that this time. It's not necessary to do that, but that's a, a way of simplifying the equation a little bit. So you're just remembering that the polar form of the number minus 1 is 1 angle 180 degrees. And when you multiply that, that brings us back to 360 degrees, or equivalently 0 degrees, since we can take modulo of 360 degrees. Now the current leaving through the 4 ohm resistor, that'll just be V1 divided by 4 ohms. And then the current leaving through the 9 ohm resistor will just be V1 minus V2 um, divided by the 9 ohms. So that's the first KCL equation, and that is uh, correct. And then now we need to do it for node 2. So first we have a 9 ohm, so we need uh, two node voltages there. And J3 is connected to ground, so we'll just need this term. Um, and then uh, the minus J6 is connected to another node, so we'll need this term. 
and then that's all equal to zero. And so remember that if I'm writing an equation for node two and I'm adding currents that leave node two, then V2 will always have a positive sign. That's a way to check that your equation is correct. So I'm gonna have V2 minus V1 divided by nine ohms. That's the current exiting in this direction. And then the current going here to ground will be V, um, it's gonna be plus V2 over J3 ohms. And that's because the positive side here is, and again, this has nothing to do with the direction of I0. It has to do with the fact that we're adding currents that are leaving. So I0 is irrelevant here to doing that. And then we have to add the current leaving V2 to go to V3. So that's gonna be V2 minus V3. Always high voltage to low voltage, if you will. Um, although we don't know which actually of those is higher at this point, but we just treat it as if it is. And that's divided by negative J6. I'll check that equation, and that's correct. And finally, we need, so we've done uh, V1 and V2, now we need to write one for V3. And then uh, V4, actually it's, well, let's do V3 first. So we have um, a term here that involves two nodes, and then we have a term through a current source, that's just a fixed value of current, and then another uh, capacitor that leads to another node, so that's gonna be this type of term, and that's all equal to zero. And again, I could algebraically re rearrange this equation in many ways if I wish to do that. Um, I'm just in the habit of doing it this way, which is the most straightforward way, I think, but you can do it other ways as long as they're algebraically equivalent to this. Okay, so I'm gonna have V3 minus V2 divided by negative J6 ohms. And now this current actually enters node three and we're adding currents that leave node three. So an entering current is the negative of one that leaves it. And so instead of using I2S here, I need to use minus I2S. So I'm gonna put a minus sign there. And then the value of I2S I see is five angle 30. Or I could subtract 180 degrees from this, making it minus 150 and change this to a plus sign. Either one of those would be correct. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it like this. And finally, we have V3 minus V4 divided by negative J1 ohms. And finally, notice that for node four, we cannot write a KCL equation because it's connected to a voltage source. And the current through a voltage source is whatever it needs to be. We have no way of knowing that at this point. And so we don't try to write that equation. It's basically part of, you could consider this as a reference super node, if you will, um, since it's connected to the reference node via a voltage source. And we already have enough KCL equations. In fact, it's even telling us that. So uh, we don't need to write that. We just have enough equations now for the number of unknowns. And so we're all done. We just press no more equations. And as always, you can get a detailed view of these equations. I'm gonna skip that right now in the interest of time. Thank you.